When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. St. Irenaeus once said that anyone who does not comprehend God's birth of Mary cannot comprehend the Eucharist either. And this makes sense, for weighed down as we are by the effects of original sin, our tendency is to turn God and faith into an abstraction. The concreteness of the Eucharist is given to us precisely to prevent us from that error. And it all begins when God takes on real, human flesh in the womb of Mary, the Mother of God. Father Raniero Cantalamessa, the papal preacher, reminds us that the Latin for mother, mater, comes from the word materia, it's where we get words like matter and material. He says that by silently entering the womb of a woman, God comes down into the very heart of matter, concretely and really. And the God who became flesh in a woman's womb is the same God who comes to us in the heart of matter, which is the Eucharist. Moreover, as Pope John Paul II pointed out, not only does Mary lead us to Christ, but also Christ leads us to his mother. As the Catechism expresses it, Mary's function as mother of men in no way obscures or diminishes the unique mediation of Christ, but rather shows its power. A woman named Cheryl Carter decided to adopt a young African orphan named Muhammad after learning about his plight while watching television. When the complicated process was at last completed, Muhammad did not understand the concept of adoption. He thought he was being brought to the United States to become the woman's servant. Shocked at this, Cheryl said, I don't want you to be my houseboy. I want you to be my son. The boy replied, I don't know what that means, but if you teach me, I will learn. Christ leads us to his mother so that through her maternal mediation, we will learn what it means to become God's sons and God's daughters. She leads us to the fruit of her womb, the Eucharistic Jesus, whereby we become truly his brothers and sisters. St. John Vianney says that after the Lord had given us all he could, his body and blood, to be food for our souls, he willed also to give us the most precious thing he had left, which was his Holy Mother. One gift leads to the other. St. Germanus of Constantinople calls the Blessed Virgin Mary the table of food that fills us who are perishing through hunger with the bread of life. Let us pray. Loving Father, in the mother of your Son, the Godhead is joined and kneaded into one dough with our humanity so securely that this union could never be broken, neither by death nor by our thanklessness. May we always reverence these inestimable